everyone. Thank you for coming to today's Folio Forum, uh, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment, EBSCO, and Index Data. Uh, my name is Peter Murray, and I'm the open source community advocate at Index Data and the host for today's event. Uh, our topic today is the outreach SIG. Uh, today's session, uh, like all Folio forums, is being recorded and posted to the Open Library Foundation's YouTube channel uh, and to the resources section of folio.org. Uh, as an open forum, participants can see uh, the names and questions uh, being submitted. Uh, and we've uh, muted everyone except for the speakers to ensure good sound quality. Uh, we do value your participation and encourage you to engage in the topic. You can use the question box within Zoom at the bottom of the Zoom window uh, to enter questions and comments as they come to you. Uh, the uh, speakers uh, will address them uh, as we go along. Uh, if you like to tweet and want to ask questions and make comments that way, uh, please use the Twitter hashtag Folio Forum. Uh, we also uh, encourage you to continue this conversation on the Folio Discussion website, uh, discuss.folio.org. Uh, our speakers today are Rachel Fadlin from EBSCO, uh, Ginny Boyer from the Open Library Environment, uh, Marie, uh, Jana Maria uh, Freytag uh, from the GBV Consortium, uh, Kate Waldron from EBSCO, and Carolyn Morris from Bibliolabs. Uh, and to start things off, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel. Thank you, Peter. Why don't you start sharing initially the deck, Peter, if that's okay with you? I can do that. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for being here. Excellent. So I just want to point out before we start that Patrick Zinn from Texas A&M was supposed to join us today. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, he was not able to join us. And Peter, thank you so much for filling in and taking his part in talking about the website. Um, but thanks for putting in the work, Patrick, and we're sorry that he couldn't be here with us. Um, you, can, you can move on, Peter. Thank you. I wanted to, and you can you can switch straight to the next slide. I just wanted to briefly, before um, I pass it over to the rest of the community outreach SIG, everyone here today are members of our SIG. And I wanted to just give a brief overview of what the SIG is, what our mission is and what we do, and a little bit about why we thought it was important to have a forum today. The community outreach SIG aims to keep the community informed of news and events and encourage community engagement in the project. The SIG maintains communication channels, including our new, fancy new website, folio.org, Twitter, a community newsletter, the blog, and the public calendar. And we explore and make recommendations to adopt new channels to enhance communication to the community. Our SIG maintains the conference calendar, and we help facilitate coordination and submission of conference topics. We provide shared materials for use by the community, including logos, a branding guide, slide templates, a template on how to host meetups, etc. One example of a new resource that you see on the slide here is our new Aster release badge. Uh, we saw a need to refer to platform releases by names uh, rather than just Q3, Q4, and so on, to make each release clearer to our community and to the community at large. So we came up with a list of alphabetized flowers and created a badge that will be used for each release. Our SIG will continue to look for ways to enhance communication and engagement in the project. And the reason that we thought it was important to have a forum was so that we could clarify our role in the community so that everyone understands what our SIG, the work that our SIG does. Um, we also wanted to take the opportunity to highlight some of the work that we've done. And when I pass it off, that's what you're gonna see today. And we wanted to show some of the community processes that we've created that are in place around conferences and meetups so that we can encourage you all to help us um, to grow the community and help us promote things like conferences and meetups. Uh, and so unless there are any questions, I would like to pass it over to Peter who will begin and start talking about the website.
thanks, Rachel. Uh, in addition to uh, hosting the forum today, uh, I am also on the community outreach SIG, uh, and I wanted to to lead you through uh, a little bit uh, about our website. Um, the The website uh, has an interesting story. Uh, my history with uh, the Folio project uh, is going on. Oh gosh, is it three years now, I think? Um, and when we had the, the first uh, announcement at uh, ALA, we had uh, a very basic uh, website. Uh, it had um, a, a kind of a glossy brochure, kind of a, our aspirational vision of what we were coming to. Uh, but it didn't have much information about how to get involved and, and for those that were involved in the project, uh, how to reach the various resources uh, and, and parts of the project. Uh, and so we, as a, one of the first things we did as, as a outreach SIG uh, is take a, a look at the website. Uh, and I especially want to, to call out uh, the, the uh, people and, and the, the groups listed on, on the slide here. Uh, this was a, a, a website, you know, it's interesting with, with the Folio project uh, covering so many different institutions, so many different service providers. Uh, the, the website had to uh, uh, work for a, a large audience of people. Uh, and so, we, we had a, a, a big process of defining the, the pain points uh, and working with the uh, EBSCO uh, web team, uh, their user experience designers, uh, their web developer, uh, their, their senior marketing director uh, and, and director of marketing, uh, and then uh, passed all of this through a number of uh, different uh, committees and, and SIGs uh, so that uh, people could see what it is that we're doing and uh, give us feedback on uh, the website that we were developing. So uh, again, going back very early to the project, the, 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 the project grew very organically and it grew very organically, very quickly. Uh, and so we had all of these different communication paths, uh, different communication channels that were being used uh, that we were trying out to, to try to, to, to uh, meet the needs of the project and the people that were interested in the project. Uh, so we analyzed those and, and really listened to what uh, the community was telling us. Uh, we looked at some of the early web analytics uh, from the first website, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the way uh, that the, the, the websites, the various websites, more than one were being used. Uh, and then looked at what some of our uh, peer open source communities were doing. Uh, we looked at Koha and Evergreen, uh, kind of very closely related to the library space. Uh, we looked at, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to, um, some, some, more, some of the more academic library uh, sites. I think some Internet 2 sites, uh, also the Apero uh, Foundation, uh, the uh, Sakai uh, folks, uh, and then looked even broader than that, just into to general uh, open source communities, Apache uh, community websites, um, uh, Dru the Drupal website was a big inspiration for us, uh, and then kind of crunched all of that information together uh, to come up with a set of, of uh, needs uh, that we thought uh, the the website was going to uh, going to have to serve, uh, and from that we we started uh, setting some goals, uh, building some wireframes, and talking about the the architecture uh, of the main website, uh, how people would get around, uh, how somebody that was brand new to the project, you know, how would we give them what they wanted to see, uh, someone who had been in the project for three years, uh, how could we get to what they wanted to see, uh, and then started creating uh, content uh, uh, based on those uh, wireframes uh, and uh, finally developed uh, and published the site. 
Uh, so uh, this is what it looks like at uh, www.folio.org. Uh, let me actually uh, bring it up live here uh, so that we can take a look at some of the key things that, that we wanted to do. One of the, the, the key things that we heard in uh, the, the analysis and, and talking with people was a way to uh, uh, get consistency uh, in navigation. And so uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, many of the websites uh, have this navigation bar uh, that's common across them. So we can go to uh, the discuss site uh, and it has uh, the, this, this similar uh, navigation. Uh, this is still a, a work in progress. Uh, we're still working on uh, making this more consistent uh, and bringing it to all of the sites. Uh, most notably, uh, the issues.folio.org site uh, doesn't have uh, this toolbar uh, because, um, well, uh, the JIRA software is a real pain um, to work with. Uh, kind of put, put it nicely, I guess. Um, so uh, below the fold, we've got the, the major areas, uh, or below that, that toolbar, we have the major areas of the website uh, where you can come in and uh, get immediately to uh, news and events, uh, the resources, the blog, uh, come to the, the community areas, uh, our tools uh, and our list of supporting partners. Uh, and then uh, for newcomers, we encourage you to, to get started uh, right with uh, the, uh, the, the project. Here's uh, where you get uh, some information uh, about what uh, Folio is uh, and be able to get to some of our, uh, our quick uh, uh, videos and resources for learning uh, more about the project. Um, as you scroll down, you get to, to learn uh, a little bit more about Folio. Uh, and then as a newcomer, we hope you want to, to get involved. And so whether you're a librarian, a developer, uh, or a, a vendor or service provider, uh, we have pages that are specific to them. Uh, we then have some news and events, and we always encourage folks to sign up for the uh, uh, community newsletter. Uh, this comes out about once uh, every uh, two weeks uh, and has information about uh, events or um, our release party at ALA Midwinter, uh, if you're going to Midwinter, um, and just a, a, a way to, to keep people uh, involved uh, in, in the project, uh, help people know uh, what's going on in the project. Um, we also have uh, a list of uh, supporting partners and contributors. Uh, and happy to say uh, that this is a, a really uh, long and growing list. Uh, if you're wondering uh, who's involved uh, in Folio, uh, you can quickly come to this page, uh, note which libraries uh, uh, have made that additional commitment to join the open library environment, uh, and then look at the uh, uh, early implementers, uh, the developers, uh, and the service providers. Uh, so just coming to this page uh, is, is exciting uh, just to see uh, all of the, the people that are involved, that have been involved and, and continue to get involved. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to pass it off to Carolyn uh, who's going to show you some of the resources available on the site.
and Carol, there you go. Yes. Um, so one of the things that the community outreach SIG does is maintain um, resources for anybody who wants to talk about folio, whether that be by hosting a folio event or by um, speaking at a conference or writing and posting things on their own website. And to do that, what we've done is develop a um, list of resources that you can access easily from the web. So logos, the branding guide, infographics, videos and webinars are all there for you to use as you're looking at um, talking about folio in your own context. So as Peter said that and showed that's from the about page from under about and then resources. So if I click here um, you can see I got here by going about and to resources. And Carol, uh, you just yeah. need to share your screen. Ah, sorry. Did not hit the share little blue button in the corner. There we go. There we go. So let me show you here then. I got to here by about and then um, resources. And what you can see. Um, yeah, we're not seeing, I think you shared uh, the wrong screen, maybe. We're seeing your desktop. Thank you. Like I've never done this before. Yes. Now? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, so again, we'll try again. About and then resources here. Um, and then what you'll be able to see easily is that we currently have 65 items that are here on this page and you can easily filter them. So if I only want to see things about branding, obviously just check this box and then I'm down to four resources. Um, so you're going to get the high resolution versions of the current um, logos and then a full branding guide so that you can get all of the fonts, the different colors, anything you want to do to be able to create um, a custom look on Folio for your organization, um, but staying within the branding lines. There are also photographs in there, which might be um, highly useful when putting something together. Um, to quickly go through them, and the infographics, right now there are two of those um, that talks about community involvement. And so what we will do is try to keep these updated um, as part of the work of the community outreach SIG so that you always have easy access to the latest information to share um, with your, within your own community or as you're doing folio outreach. Um, there are also videos and webinars. Um, so these are great starting places. Um, some of the videos that might be of interest are um, ones where other people have hosted a meetup. So here, for instance, is a meetup in um, Durham, North Carolina, and it can give you a sense of just what other people have done as you're planning events around Folio. And that's really it, really very easy to use. We will be adding um, the PowerPoint template under branding as well, um, so that you have easy access to that as well and don't have to create it on your own. Thank you, Peter. I'm gonna stop sharing now and turn it back to you. Um. I'm trying to remember who was next on the list. I, uh, think, Jenny, I think it's my go. turn. Go mm -hmm. for it. Okay. Um, can everyone see my desktop? Okay. So my name is Jenny Boyer and I'm with Olay for the Open Library Environment. And my responsibility today is to talk to you all about um, how to access some other community sites that are linked uh, from the Folio website. So the Folio website is a, is a wonderful resource um, for telling you all about the Folio project and its, its many different facets. But we use um, a variety of different platforms, tools, and resources to deliver the full complement of information that you need to participate in the project and to get involved in the conversation around Folio. Let's see if I can advance here. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to call out, I have a few slides to uh, go through today and then I'm going to do a demo as well to really show you how to how to do this. Let's see if I can minimize that. There we go. 
Um, but in the new design, we have this, this really great persistent nav bar across the top that will allow you to get to all of these sites. Um, and I think Rachel, Rachel told me last week that um, our designers are working to really replicate this across the different sites as well, so that there'll be this consistency um, across all of our different web presences to allow you to get to each of these sources to get the full complement of information that you need to participate uh, in the Folio project. So in addition to the Folio site, um, another thing that is extremely useful is our wiki, which is housed in Confluence. Uh, Peter ref, uh, referred to JIRA, which I'll talk about as well, but Confluence is the wiki that we use, which can be found at wiki.folio.org. Um, and again, I'll give you a live demo of this site, but this is a really fantastic resource for you to get some basic information um, on the project uh, and specifically to learn more about our SIGs or special interest groups. So I'll show you that as well, where you can kind of drill down and look at uh, a SIG individually and even see how you can get involved in that conversation uh, when we move over to the, the live demo. Another really important site that we wanted to elevate today is our Discuss site. Uh, so this is a project discussion board and it is linked from that universal nav bar as well. And it's really a place to facilitate discussion about Folio and about the different facets of development that are going into manifesting this project specifically. So there are different categories of conversation that you can drill down into to learn more um, just about the discourse, but to also participate in the conversation if you have a question to ask or if you have some knowledge to contribute. Sorry about that. Again, this will be included in the um, in the live demo as well. But again, if you are if you are noting URLs here for your for your own purposes, this can be found at discuss.folio.org specifically. But I will show you how to get to that um, using that blue navigation bar on the Folio website. Finally, there's a third kind of subset of sites uh, that we link to from the Folio website, which is specifically for developers. Um, Peter referred to JIRA, which is uh, where issues are logged that are specific to the development of Folio. So that could log a feature request or it could indicate a bug that needs to be addressed. Uh, but again, this is, this is a really um, fascinating place, although slightly complicated, but fascinating place to, to see more about the nuts and bolts of development happening within the Folio project. We also have other resources that uh, facilitate onboarding into the project for developers. And then, of course, our source code is housed at GitHub um, for, for you to be able to download and take a look at. Um, and finally, I'm going to show you um, how to access our Slack so that you can sign up to participate in the conversation. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with Slack, but it's a very simple chat tool that can allow you to join different facets of conversation happening uh, in and around the Folio development work. So I'm going to switch over to the website. So Peter gave you um, a general overview of the Folio site, but again, what I'm going to specifically focus I'll show you one page under community that I think is really valuable. But again, this top na navigation bar is really going to get you to all of those resources I just referred to that are specific to developers, our project wiki, which is that Confluence site that I referred to, and our discuss, uh, our discussion boards, where you can again kind of dive in and participate in the conversation happening around Folio and Folio development. Um, I did want to show you really quickly this link under community, uh, community tools. Uh, to me, when I was preparing for this presentation, I found this page and I just wanted to elevate it because I think it's a really useful, concise list of links to each of these sites. Um, so again, you can always access them using this top navigation bar, but if you wanted kind of a concise list of the different sites and tools that are available to you for immersing yourself in the Folio project and the work and conversation happening around that, this page is really useful as well. So in addition to having links, it has very simple, um, concise uh, descriptions of what each of the, the utility and purpose of these sites is. So let's start with the, oh, I had this open, close that, the wiki. Uh, so again, uh, if you were to click here, Project Wiki, it's going to open 
a tab for you and send you here. Again, this is a Confluent site, so you may or may not be familiar with sort of the general layout of it. Um, but in general, I would just point your attention to these two sections here. So you have a list of important documents, which is, again, if you're brand new to the Folio project and you want to learn more, this is a really nice place to get started to just kind of browse over the different documentation that's available to help you um, just kind of get acclimated and get your feet wet with learning more about what's happening in this project. And then specifically, um, so if, if developers, there's a different list of resources that are available for developers. If you're not a developer, but you are another professional in a library that's interested in participating in this project, then a special interest group may be the place for you. So a special interest group is essentially subject matter experts that are participating on behalf of their library or institution and are contributing their functional expertise to the Folio project, um, which is infinitely valuable in the development of this project. So I wanted to show you just one. You'll see a full list here of our SIGs um, that are currently operational. Some of them are more active than others. Um, but if you were to click on any one of these, and I did open metadata management, um, this will give you a, a nice description of what the SIG's um, kind of mission and purpose is. Uh, it will tell you who is currently affiliated with the SIG um, and their contact information, I believe, yes, is available uh, by clicking on their, uh, their, link, their name. And additionally, it will tell you about meetings. So uh, we use Zoom for meetings and as you can see here under meetings, it says that the MM team meets via Zoom on Thursdays at noon. Uh, so if you were interested in popping in and listening to the conversation, you can always do that. Um, and if you're, if you're interested in notifying someone in advance before you do that, uh, please feel free to contact the SIG convener. You can find this information here as well. Uh, and Laura Wright happens to be the SIG convener for the metadata management SIG. So this is a really useful resource for, again, acclimating to the project, but also learning more about the nuts and bolts of how to participate um, from a functional expertise perspective, and also gives you access to people that you can reach out to for more information about how to get involved. I'll close these. Um, back to the Folio site, if you were to click on the discussion boards link, it's going to link you out to our discuss.folio.org. Again, this is our project discussion site. You will see some of the activity here. Of course, there's Peter right at the top. Um, I believe he's a site admin, so uh, you'll see a lot of Peter happening here. But we have nice categories here on the left-hand side, which allow you to drill down into the different facets of conversation happening here. Um, and always you can sign up to participate in the conversation as well. There are various links along the top here that give you some information about guidelines for discussion, code of conduct, um, et cetera, that allow you to know how to adequately and properly participate in this venue. And then finally, um, back to the Folio site, if you click on this little carrot for developers, you will see uh, various links to different resources for developers. I'm going to show you one specifically, which is our, our dev.folio.org site. And this is really a fantastic resource for bringing together documentation and links that are uh, specific and particular to software developers that want to participate in the project. Um, there's a basic nav bar here, and this start link is a really great place to tell you how to get started. Uh, so if, if you are a developer or if you're interested in passing this information along to a developer in your organization, this is a fantastic place to start to learn more about the Folio project, the code, the software development happening on the project currently. The only other link that I will um, point you to is this source link which is going to give you more information about actually accessing the source code, <clears throat> excuse me, which is housed on GitHub. And we have various repositories um, in the GitHub Folio organization that, um, that host the core project code. So again, more information can be found here uh, for, for developers within your organization if they are interested in getting involved in the Folio project. Back on our website, the, the last thing that I wanted to point you to, um, and again, the, all of these links are available on that dev.folio.org site that I just showed you, uh, but to join the chat, um, this, is, this is Slack. So you can sign up for chat if you have not joined uh, the Folio Slack. 
um, and then you can download the application to your to your computer and you can get started conversating with us. Um, there are gener generic channels and there are specific channels to different um, conversations happening in and around the project. And we encourage you to join that conversation at any point um, to get involved in the good work happening around Folio. That is all that I have to share at this point. I'm happy to field or answer any questions about anything that I have presented today. Uh, but for now, I'll stop sharing my desktop and hand it back to Peter. Okay, great. Uh, we don't have any questions as of yet, so I'll just remind folks uh, to uh, use that Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom screen uh, to, uh, to ask uh, questions and we'll just uh, put them in. Uh, oh, we do have one question here. Uh, if I wanted to find out uh, about the development of resource sharing, uh, specifically ILL, uh, where should I go to track the, track the progress? I'm assuming that you're referring to the reshare project. Is that correct? That might be the reshare project, yes. Okay. okay. Um, Rachel, I'm going to have you jump in here because I'm not exactly sure um, where that conversation is happening currently. And I don't know that we link to that from our Folio website. I actually think Peter, who represents index data, would be the best person to answer that question since. Yeah, I can yeah. take that. Um, and, and it takes a, a little bit of, of explanation uh, in that uh, reshare is, is kind of a peer project to Folio. Uh, if, if you think of, of Folio uh, as, a, as a project that, that is uh, creating the apps that, that mimic a, um, uh, a, a uh, integrated library system, uh, there's another project going on, uh, Project Reshare, that is creating apps that do that kind of resource sharing and interlibrary loan. Uh, so they have their own website, uh, projectreshare.org, I believe it is, uh, and uh, their own governance structure, uh, and they're under the same uh, uh, foundation as the Folio project, the, the, uh, the Open Library Foundation. Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, we should think about some uh, cross-project linking. Uh, we need to, to maybe bring that uh, to uh, our next outreach SIG meeting. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, and so who is up next? I think that's me. Ah, very good. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And I'd like to share immediately my <laughs> screen. Um, can you all see it? Yes, we can. Very well, then I'll start. Okay, I'm Jana and I'm from the Common Library Network in Germany. So excuse my English, please. <laughs> and it's yeah, GBV for, for short. And um, um, apart from my work in the local ILS team here, I'm working for the HBZ GBV Folio project team. And I'm part of the Folio community now for 10 months, I think. And my focuses are not only the community outreach, outreach SIG, but also the resource access SIG, where I'm a SME um, two times a week. And yeah, today I'd like to talk to you about conferences and how you can participate and also how we can support you in participating and um, how you can maybe help us <laughs> distribute the information. But let's start first with, oh, well, yeah, clicking will, will do. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's start with conference submissions. I divided the conference part in conference submissions and conference, conference booth. So um, now we start with submissions. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk to you about how we can help you and how we'd like to know about your conference submissions. And at first, um, see um, at first you of course have had to choose your topic and which conference on which conference you want to like to contribute to and it would be um, 
you have always asked yourself the question, is it for you relevant and is it in your interest and in the audience's interest? And um, for a number of conferences, you can um, always look into Trello, I think. Um, we have a folio Trello where uh, some conferences are listed. So there you can get some. Um, then you can check with us, with the CO SIG, and um, check in our Google Drive folder and all the resources um, that we already heard about and from the last, and from in the last minute, say. <laughs> and yeah, plus that's the place where we collect all the submission proposals and all the already accepted pro um, proposals. Yeah. Um, the next step, um, in my opinion, the most important one is uh, to ask the community who else is involved and also who wants to be involved. And if you need a co-presenter, for example, you can always look for um, um, other people there and that can you can do that via mail or as a, oh, you can email us or you can also do it directly, of course, um, via Slack or social media. And I think it would be very helpful and beneficial to exchange, to have an exchange about that. Well, and then, of course, it would be very good to report back to us and give us feedback afterwards if that's, um, yeah, if that, if you can do that. Well, in my experience, uh, it is really, really fruitful and very um, helpful to have a community exchange and Okay, that's it for submissions. The next would be conference booth. And as you can see on that beautiful picture, <laughs> our colleagues are really happy <laughs> doing, um, doing something like a help desk for Folio. And as you can see, all the, um, the banners and all the materials on, on that picture are, were kindly, um, the templates for it and also the stickers are were kindly given by the community outreach stick, so you can always contact us for these kind of things and um, we would help you with that. But most importantly, email us if you do something like that so we can contribute, promote and contribute and promote your event. Well, they are also a friendly picture of my colleagues <laughs> and um, a very important part is um, also to identify as a folio member via a button or <laughs> a sticker or something like that. Also, you could maybe wear a hat or be custom. That were all <laughs> things we thought about <laughs> in our meetings. So why not? Um, never seen that, but maybe. Well, the stickers and buttons helped a lot because in the past, um, they made us approachable um, at large conferences and it was very well received because a lot of people came to us and asked us, quest asked us questions about Folio and we always were prepared to show the demo. So you always have to um, be prepared to do that, I think, or it was in the, in the past, it was uh, the case for us. Um, well, and last but not least, invite people to, into our community um, so we can get better and even more people come and can tr contribute to Folio. Well, that was my very short um, update on conferences and my, I think for the last part, I just want to say, um, contact us if you like to do that or if you need help. Yeah, thank you. That's it. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you, Jana. Um, Kate, I think you're up next. I am. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yes, we there see we another B. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to briefly go over how to organize a community meetup. Um, and pretty much reiterate some of the items that Yana was discussing earlier. So planning a community meetup. The 
best way to host a successful event is to put some time into the pre-planning. So part of that includes identifying the location of the meeting, who will be hosting the meeting, um, where on your campus can this meeting be held, um, and what are possible date options. We ask for three um, just to be able to avoid other conflicts. Um, and part of that is keeping in mind conferences, other events, academic calendars, and holidays when looking at dates. Um, one of the other items is the budget. Who will be paying for that meetup? Can the host cover the cost for the catering and the room rental? If you're at a university, do you even have a room rental cost? Um, what do you anticipate being the agenda? This ties into everything else we've talked about. Who can you include from the community as far as librarians, developers, and other vendors to help present? Um, if you have this information planned out ahead of time, then it helps make the entire process seamless. So here I included the community outreach SIG email. Um, you can reach out to us. We prefer at least three months out, um, and that's how we can help get this pulled together. We've also put together a list of documents to help in your planning. So we've created guideline documents that include the process for organizing, including the steps I just went over, but also how to get a registration page set up, how to save social media, have social media coverage, how to manage the invite process. Um, we also recommend, uh, ha have a recommended timeline and best practices. And I'm just going to show the document, which can be found here. Um, everything's broken out and really clear. Um, maybe we've given you too much information to help plan um, and really got you ahead of the game. And then we have the recommended timeline that can be found here. And then down at the bottom, the links to suggested room layouts, event descriptions, sample agendas, and then sample email texts. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, um, I tend to work on majority of the meetups, so I'm happy to help. Um, and my email is also right here, kwaldron at ebsco.com, or you can also reach out to the outreach SIG. And that's it. Peter, back to you. Okay, yes. Um looking this is the the end of the uh material uh we had prepared uh d discussing uh the uh the website uh the various resources uh available in the project and uh how to organize meetups uh we're gonna uh pause here uh for a moment uh to see if there are any uh additional uh questions that you might have um, while we'll do that, while uh, waiting to see um, uh, if there are any other questions, uh, I do want to say, uh, give a, a, a little bit about what's coming up. Uh, we have a special forum on Friday, February 1st. Uh, that's a rescheduling of the folio uh, end of the year review. Uh, our next regularly scheduled forum is on February 6th uh, with the topic of the Folio Roadmap Update. Uh, and the announcements uh, to register uh, will be sent out to the uh, uh, Folio newsletter list. Uh, so if you remember, go to www.folio.org, scroll all the way down to the bottom uh, and sign up for the newsletter there. Uh, you can also find uh, information uh, about those events uh, in the events section of the folio.org homepage. Uh, also on the events page, you'll find information about Folio at ALA Midwinter. Uh, Peter McCracken and Sebastian Hammer have a, a session on uh, uh, the Symposium of the Future Libraries track. Uh, and then there's the Aster release party on Saturday night. Uh, and uh, you can find information about those uh, and RSVP to the release party uh, on the events page. I don't see any other questions coming in. So uh, this concludes uh, today's Folio Forum on the Outreach SIG. 
Uh, we've been live tweeting the forum. Uh, so for a short recap and a, a links to the resources, uh, look for the Folio Forum hashtag uh, on the Folio underscore LSP Twitter account. Uh, and a big thank you to the social media team from EBSCO for doing that live tweeting. Uh, you can also, you can continue the conversation uh, using that Folio Forum hashtag uh, and at the Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio.org. Uh, the recording of today's forum uh, will also be posted to YouTube shortly. Uh, thank you to our speakers, uh, Rachel, uh, Ginny, Yana, uh, apologize for mispronouncing your name earlier, uh, Kate and Carolyn, uh, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Uh, thank you and have a great rest of your day.